Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. In a galaxy teeming with conflict and despair, could humanity's darkest strategies turn the tide of an interstellar war? Let's get into the story. The Great Chamber of the Galactic Council was ablaze with holographic projections. Delegates from a dozen star systems argued in a hundred tongues, their translated voices a cacophony that bounced off the metallic walls. Ambassador Lysetra of the Lyrian Collective swiveled her multifaceted eyes in agitation, the chitinous plates of her exoskeleton clicking softly. Order! Order! Her voice amplified and pitched for maximum effect cut through the din. Our worlds are in flames, and we must act. The Karkorum delegate, a towering, insectile creature with serrated mandibles, hissed in amusement. Act a little, Lyrian. Is that what you call this pathetic display? Your worlds burn because you are weak. A ripple of outrage crossed the chamber. The Lyrians were a peaceful species, known for their art and philosophy, not for war. But they were also one of the founding races of the Council, and their worlds were not accustomed to being reduced to ash. The Karkorum will answer for this, Lysatra threatened, her voice trembling slightly. The insectile ambassador let out a rasp that served as laughter in his species. <laughs> answer to whom? This Council? Your armies are dust. Your fleets are scattered. There is no one left to answer to but us. It was true. The speed of the Karkorum onslaught had been breathtaking, as terrifying as it was strategically brilliant. They had refused to play by the Council's rules of engagement, preemptively striking Lyrian outposts before a formal declaration of war could even be transmitted. Lysatra felt a surge of despair. They had been too slow, too trusting of the peace their council had worked so hard to build. Now they were paying the price in Lyrian lives. We are not yet defeated, she insisted. The Orians fight with the strength of ten. The Valorians still hold their home system. For now, the Karkorum sneered, but their time will come, as will yours. His gaze settled on a section of the chamber that had remained conspicuously silent, a curtained alcove set apart from the raised tiers where the rest of the delegates gathered. Inside, shrouded in carefully cultivated shadow, was the delegation from Earth. Humans. Perhaps your humans will save you, the Kirkorum taunted. His voice dripped with derision. Humans were the enigma of the Council. They had only communicated through remote links for the few decades they'd been members, never sending a physical representative to the Grand Chamber. The Council knew little of the bipedal mammals beyond their seemingly average technological prowess and their unsettlingly expansionist tendencies within their own solar system. The humans had always been a wild card, unpredictable. Now it seemed the Council's very survival hinged on their next move. The silence from the alcove stretched painfully longer. Then came a single word, transmitted into the chamber in a low, accented voice, a voice the Council had never heard before. Perhaps... A ripple of surprise echoed through the chamber. The Karkorum ambassador paused mid-hiss, his mandibles clicking open and shut in confusion. The other delegates stared in a mixture of horror and anticipation toward the curtained alcove. The human voice continued slow and deliberate. The Karkorum ambassador is correct. This council is weak. Its protocols, its traditions. These are relics of an age now devoured by war. Lysatra gasped. Never had a delegation, much less the enigmatic humans, spoken so disrespectfully in this hallowed hall. But there was a strange ring of truth to it. Had an action doomed them all? The Karkorum have played by their own rules, the humans said. Rules written with the blood of your worlds. To answer them, to defeat them, we must cast aside the old ways. We must become something new. A figure emerged from the darkness of the alcove, stepping into the harsh light of the chamber. He was tall for a human, garbed in a simple utilitarian jumpsuit. There were flecks of gray in his close-cropped hair, and his face was weathered, marked with lines that spoke of a life lived outside the comforts of starships and climate-controlled habitats. My name is General Marcos, he announced, his voice resonating in the vast space. I speak for Earth. He fixed the Karkorum ambassador with a chillingly calm stare. I assure you, the Karkorum's time is at an end. A wave of uneasy muttering swept through the chamber. 
Marcos's words were bold, arrogant even. Yet after consecutive Karkorum victories, there was a desperate hunger for such defiance coursing through the assembled delegates. The Karkorum ambassador's mandibles clacked angrily. The empty boast, little mammal, he sneered. Your ships are primitive. Your warriors have never tasted battle on this scale. Marcos offered a mirthless smile. Primitive, perhaps, but with a brutality you haven't begun to comprehend. He turned towards the rest of the council. My proposal is simple. Grant Earth full strategic authority. Place your forces, your shipyards, and the resources of your worlds at our disposal. In return, we'll show you what real war looks like. Lysatra's multifaceted eyes narrowed. This was madness. To place such trust, such power in the hands of a race they barely understood? But hadn't they already failed by trusting in the old ways? We cannot, sputtered the Valorian delegate, a stout reptilian wreathed in swirling robes. This, uh, this is a surrender. It's a gamble, retorted Marcos, but a gamble with far better odds than the path you're on now. We've studied the Karkorum. We know how their minds work, their tactics, their weaknesses. Now it's a question of whether you've got the stomach for what we'll have to do. His gaze swept over the council once more. So the question is simple. Do you want to live or do you want to die clinging to your precious traditions? Silence settled across the chamber, a heavy blanket stifling the anxious murmurs. Lysatra felt a knot twist in her gut. To side with the humans was to abandon all she knew, to rewrite the very rules of this galactic society, and yet to reject them was to seal the doom of her world and countless others. The Valorian delegate hissed in indecision, his beady eyes darting between Marcos and the Karkorum ambassador. Even the Karkorum seemed momentarily taken aback by the human's audacity. Finally, a booming voice echoed from the Orion delegation. A warrior the size of a small shuttle encased in gleaming battle armor stepped forward. The Orion clans have grown weary of this council's inaction, he declared, hefting a heavy, massive energy axe. We will follow this human. We are born for war, and we thirst for the blood of those who have wronged us. An immediate chorus of hisses and growls rose from the surrounding Orion delegates, a bloodthirsty echo to his sentiment. The Orion fleet, though battered by the Karkorum assault, was still a force to be reckoned with. With their support, the tide of opinion began to shift. Lysatra weighed the risk, her heart pounding against her segmented thorax. The humans were an unknown variable, a desperate gamble. But they were, perhaps, the only gamble left. Lyria stands with Earth, she declared, her voice rising above the din. Let us fight fire with fire. A wave of mixed gasps and cheers followed Lysatra's decision. The Valorian representative, seeing the momentum turn, reluctantly offered his own hesitant assent. One by one, other delegates voiced their agreement, their fear slowly drowned out by a desperate need for action. Fueled by Marcos's chillingly confident words, finally all eyes turned to the Karkorum ambassador. He reared his insectoid form, rage twisting his mandibles in a grotesque display. You fools! He screeched, spittle flying from his maw. You've signed your own death warrants. The Karkorum swarm will devour you whole. Marcos simply nodded, his expression chillingly blank. Then the feast begins, he replied. With a single decisive gesture, he turned and disappeared back into the curtained alcove. The chamber erupted into a frenzy of activity. Delegates clamored for information, for instructions, for anything that would ease the gnawing fear in their hearts. Orders echoed, urgent transmissions cut through the chaotic noise. The vast machinery of the Galactic Council was shifting into a mode it had never known. Total, uncompromising war. And at the center of it all stood the humans, their sudden dominance as jarring as it was necessary. The question weighing on everyone's mind was the same. Had they unleashed a savior or a devil? Within cycles, Marcos revealed his strategy in a presentation that left the council delegates both horrified and perversely fascinated. The days of staged battles and formal declarations were over. There would be no quarter given, no prisoners taken. This is about survival, Marcus declared, his image projected onto massive screens. The Karkorum do not negotiate. They do not take pity. They simply eradicate. 
For them, this is an extermination, and we must respond in kind. Whispers of unease rippled through the chamber. This was not the war any of them had envisioned, but Marcos was relentless. Target their brood planets, he commanded, his tone as cold as deep space. Cut down their supply lines, strike their fleets mid-warp, leaving them adrift in the void. Turn their own technology, their own ruthlessness against them. The humans had spent those initial hours analyzing every scrap of data available on their new enemy. They'd pinpointed key logistical hubs, dissected Karkorum communication networks, and identified the biological vulnerabilities concealed within their armored carapaces. Lysatra's mind raced. This was genocide, the very thing they'd struggled to prevent. And yet the Karkorum had forced their hand. Could she... Should she condemn her own people to extinction in the name of moral righteousness? She looked at the holographic projections of ruined Lyrian cities, the charred and broken bodies of her kin, and felt the cold steel of resolve harden within her. Lyria will do what must be done, she said, her voice a thin threat against the rising din of the council chamber. Marcos's plan was more than just a strategy. It was a complete paradigm shift in the way galactic war was waged. While the council species had fought like civilized duelists, the humans were about to unleash the true savagery of combat upon the Karkorum. In the weeks that followed, the humans redesigned starships for speed and stealth, sacrificing layers of defense in favor of overwhelming firepower. Shipyards across the council territories hummed day and night, refitting vessels for this new purpose under watchful human eyes. Lyrian scientists, their knowledge of art and philosophy repurposed with chilling efficiency. They developed bioweapons tailored to inflict agonizing deaths upon Karkorum physiology. Orion shock troopers were trained in lightning-fast hit-and-run tactics, emerging from the shadows to cripple vulnerable Karkorum outposts before melting back into the darkness. The council hardened under human tutelage, became a weapon honed to a razor's edge. Meanwhile, the Karkorum continued their advance, arrogantly unaware of the dark storm gathering against them. Their scout ship transmissions revealed a growing confusion, as supply lines were inexplicably severed and seemingly impregnable bases fell silent overnight. When the human-led counterattack finally commenced, it came not with a flourish in bravado, but with calculated, deadly precision. Karkorum armadas caught off guard were torn apart with shocking ease. Brood worlds accustomed to generations of peace were reduced to toxic clouds. The council races emboldened by a string of unexpected victories fought with newfound ferocity. The tide had turned, and it had done so with horrifying speed. News of the battlefield triumph spread like a brush fire through the beleaguered council territories. The initial dread began to melt, replaced by a flicker of desperate hope. Were the humans, these ruthless strategists from an insignificant planet, truly the ones to save a crumbling galactic society? Yet alongside every victory report came disturbing echoes of the tactics employed. The brutality unleashed, matched, and at times surpassed that of the Karkorum themselves. Some delegates whispered in private of atrocities committed in the name of survival, biological warfare, scorched-earth tactics, the summary execution of prisoners. The council chamber, once a place of debate and diplomacy, became a tense war room. Hollow projections of battlefields flashed constantly, and updates came in a relentless torrent, punctuated by the dry, emotionless voice of General Marcos. The humans were winning, yet the cost seemed to grow with each passing cycle. Lysatra found herself caught between the pride of her people's newfound strength and the chilling unease about the monster they had helped create. Had they bartered their principles to save their lives? What would they become once the Karkorum threat was finally eradicated? The Karkorum, caught in the vice grip of the humans' merciless strategy, scrambled to counter these unfamiliar tactics. They rushed to safeguard their brood worlds, pulled back their advanced forces to consolidate their defenses. Yet for the first time in this devastating war, the once invincible Karkorum were the ones reacting, always a step behind their newfound nemesis. As the war shifted in the Council's favor, a new dynamic emerged within its hallowed halls. The humans' grip on the strategic planning was unbreakable. Marco stood at the center of it, an enigmatic figure who neither sought nor welcomed praise, merely laid out ruthless plans that seemed to ensure victory. Lysatra found herself both drawn to and repelled by the human general. There was a single-minded intensity to him, a chilling clarity of purpose. He made decisions that would have brought ruin to the careers of any other council leader, yet results seemed to vindicate his brutality at every turn. 
While the delegates argued and debated, though now with far less vigor than before, Marco simply acted. It was as if he recognized that survival in this new era depended less on consensus and more on bold, even monstrous actions taken without hesitation. This shift in power, though unvoiced, was felt by all. The council had become less of a governing body and more of a vehicle for the human's war machine. The Galactic Alliance, once a symbol of peace, was morphing into something darker, more pragmatic. Even so, victories continued to pour in. The Karkorum facing an unexpected ferocity from their prey. They found themselves pinned back, their lines collapsing. For the first time in generations, fear echoed in their communications, an alien concept to this warrior race. It seemed that the humans, these newcomers to the galactic stage, had somehow grasped the essence of the Karkorum better than the races who'd faced this enemy for decades, and they were going to exploit that knowledge to the very brink of annihilation. The war reached its final bloody climax on the moons of Zylara Prime. The Karkorum world, the council fleets now a well-oiled machine of destruction under Marcos's direction, closed in like a noose around the once untouchable core of the Karkorum Empire. The moon's bastions, heavily armed in defense of the Brood Queens, became the stage for a brutal conflict. Orion boarding parties swarmed the defenses, their guttural war cries echoing through the corridors of the moon bases. Lyrian scientists, their knowledge of biology twisted into gruesome purpose, unleashed tailored pathogens that sent ripples of agonizing death through the Karkorum ranks. From the bridge of his command ship, Marcos watched the battle unfold, his face a mask of cold determination. The Council had paid dearly for this moment. Entire worlds lay in ruin. Fleets were vaporized. Now, it was time for the reckoning. Transmit this signal, he ordered his communication officer. A series of encrypted codes lanced out from the Council fleet, slicing through space. Hidden deep in the debris field surrounding Xylar Prime, a network of salvaged Karkorum probes reprogrammed by human engineers responded. Targeting systems throughout the Karkorum defense network locked onto their most vital assets, the Brood Queens, hidden beneath the surface of the moons. Marco spoke a single word. Fire. Beams of concentrated energy tore through space, striking the moons. The ancient rock fractured, collapsing inward. Deep within the birthing chambers, precious Karkorum Queens, the very heart of their species' survival, were incinerated in blinding flashes of light. It wasn't merely a victory, it was annihilation, and with it, the war was over. In the aftermath, a tense silence settled over the council chamber. Victorious delegates milled about, voices hushed in a mix of awe and unspoken trepidation. The Karkorum, once an unstoppable force, were now a shattered remnant, their surviving forces scattered and broken. Lysatra found herself searching for Marcos amongst the crowd, but the enigmatic general was nowhere to be seen. The alcove where the human delegation resided remained shrouded in darkness. Had the man who had orchestrated this terrible victory simply vanished? Her own species, as with many of the council races, celebrated their survival, but were deeply shaken. She could feel it in their hushed tones, in their haunted gazes, as though they mourned not just for their fallen, but for something else lost along the way, something vital to the soul of their once peaceful alliance. As the clamor of celebration grew, a dissonant note struck Lysatra. A single, booming voice arose from the Orion delegation, a voice she recognized as the clan leader who had first rallied behind Marcos's ruthless strategy. The council is weak, he roared, brandishing his bloodied energy axe. The humans have shown us true strength, true power. A wave of agreement rippled through the Orion ranks, mingled with unease from other delegations. It was a chilling echo of the Karkorum ambassador's words, spoken not so long ago in this very chamber. And, the Orion continued, power should be its own reward. He fixed his gaze on the curtained alcove. The humans have saved us. Now it is time for them to lead us. A collective gas filled the air. The Orion's words were like a firebrand thrown amongst kindling. For cycles, an unspoken fear had lurked beneath the surface. What would happen when this war, fought under the banner of survival, was finally over? Who would truly hold the power? Other Orions took up the rallying cry, voices booming with a thirst for dominance that had been dormant for far too long. 
The Valorians, their eyes narrowed with suspicion, began murmuring amongst themselves. Even amongst the Lyrians, Lysatra saw a flicker of ambition and some tempered by a far deeper horror. Had they merely traded one monstrous threat for another? Suddenly, the curtains of the alcove were thrust aside. Marco stood framed in the opening, but it wasn't the same man who had stood there weeks ago. The weathered face was now etched with a deep exhaustion, and there was something haunted in those cold eyes. No, he said, his voice, normally so strong, echoed feebly across the vastness of the chamber. The humans will not lead you. A surge of disappointment rippled through the Orion delegation, quickly replaced by simmering anger. Coward, the clan leader spat. You've tasted power. You will not deny it. He hefted his weapon threateningly. Marcos met his gaze, sadness now mixing with the weariness in his eyes. We've tasted blood, Orion. Power built on the bones of billions is no power at all. It is a curse. He paused, his voice barely a whisper. And we carry that curse for all of you now. With that, he turned his back on the chamber, disappearing once more into the shadows of the alcove. The humans had left the stage, but the play was far from over. The Galactic Council, irrevocably transformed, now faced the monumental task of rebuilding not just their worlds, but their very moral compass. In the years that followed, the Galactic Council embarked on a path of uneasy reconstruction. The shattered Karkorum posed little threat. Their once mighty empire now reduced to bickering remnants struggling for survival. But beneath the veneer of victory, a deep rift ran through the Alliance. The Orions, emboldened by their military prowess, openly challenged the Council's traditional structure. They pushed for expansion, for the subjugation of lesser races, for a new age of galactic dominance with themselves at its forefront. The Valorians, scarred by war, preached caution and a return to the old traditions, but their voices seemed weaker each passing cycle. Lysatra, now a prominent voice on the Reformed Council, found herself caught in the crossfire, she had seen firsthand cold efficiency of human strategy, the seductive allure of pure, unyielding power. Yet she also carried the chilling memory of the final moons of Xylara Prime, incinerated, extinguishing the heart of a species. There must be another way, she thought, a balance to be struck. Then came the news that startled them all. A human vessel had arrived at the edge of Council territory, but this time it didn't carry a general or a strategic plan. It carried refugees, survival from Earth's own tumultuous expansion throughout their solar system. They bore tales of the societal cost of relentless conquest, the marginalized, the exploited, the cycles of violence that sprung from the pursuit of absolute dominance. These humans didn't speak with the cold detachment of Marcos, but with the passionate sorrow of those who had seen their own world brought to the brink by the hunger for power. Their arrival ignited a fierce debate within the Council. Could these refugees, voices from the heart of a species that had saved them, also hold the key to preventing their own self-destruction? Lysatra and a growing number who shared her fears believed so. Others saw it as a ploy, a sign of weakness on the part of the humans. The Galactic Council, once a beacon of peace, had become a battleground of ideologies, a grim reflection of the war they had so narrowly won. The future hung in the balance as uncertain now as it had been during the darkest days of the Karkorum onslaught. But this time, the enemy they faced did not lurk in some distant star system. It lurked within themselves. As tension simmered within the Council, a flicker of hope emerged from an unexpected place, the shadows lingering in the wake of the Karkorum defeat. From the fringes of known space came whispers of hidden enclaves, survivors of the genocide who refused to be mere remnants of a dying empire. Unlike their conquering ancestors, these Karkorum carried a newfound humility. Ravaged, their numbers depleted, they tasted the bitterness of near extinction and rejected the path of brutality that had led them there. They sought not dominion, but coexistence. At first, the offer was met with disbelief, even outright hostility. The Orions bayed for their blood, a final act of vengeance to complete the war General Marcos had ended. Others, like the Valorians, urged caution, their trust in any species shattered by the devastating conflict. Lysatra saw an opportunity a bleak echo of their own journey from blind pacifism to the blood-soaked tactics of the humans. Change can be forged in the fires of defeat, she implored the council. We became what we had to be to survive. Perhaps they can do the same. 
Against all odds, a delegation was sent, Lyrian, Valorian, and surprisingly human, drawn from the refugees who ignited such a debate. What they found amidst the ruins of shattered worlds was not an army in hiding, but a shattered people struggling to reimagine their identity. The negotiations were fraught, haunted by the ghosts of a war still raw in the collective memory. Yet there was a shift, a recognition in the eyes of the few surviving Karkorum elders. It mirrored the turmoil the rest of the council now grappled with, the choice between vengeance and a future built on uncertain grounds. The turning point came not through grand speeches or impassioned pleas, but through the quiet resolve of a young Karkorum female, one who had lost her broodmother to the moons of Shylara Prime. I will not raise my offspring to hate, she declared, her voice trembling but clear. The cycle must end. The Karkorum delegation offered a historic concession. They would dismantle their remaining war fleets, open their territories to strict council oversight, and dedicate the resources to rebuilding devastated worlds. It was a gesture built on desperation and faith, a gamble that the council, having tasted the darkness within itself, wouldn't merely take revenge in another form. The council chamber was in turmoil. To the Orions, it was an act of weakness, a betrayal of those who had died at Karkorum hands. Others saw it as foolhardy, believing the Karkorum were merely feigning repentance, waiting to strike again from a position of feigned vulnerability. It was a human from the refugee delegation that broke the deadlock. An elderly woman, her face etched with a lifetime of loss, stepped forward. We know what unchecked hunger for power does, she said, her voice hoarse. To ourselves and to others, we have paid the price for it. She looked around the chamber, her gaze settling on the Orions with their defiant postures, and then on the hesitant Valorians. Are you going to become the monsters you fought? she asked. Or are you going to build something better? The silence that fell was deafening. Finally, Lysatra rose, joining the human woman. We are all scarred by war, she said, her multifaceted eyes reflecting the weary faces around her. But scars can fade. We must choose whether to let them harden our hearts or to let them remind us of the path we must not walk again. One by one, other delegates joined them their voices forming a tentative course of agreement. The Orions, outnumbered and grudgingly outmaneuvered, were forced to concede. And so the Galactic Council, forged in peace and tempered in the fires of war, took its first uncertain steps towards a future where reconciliation might outshine revenge as the ultimate act of strength. It was a victory far more tenuous and far more precious than any Marcos could have orchestrated on the battlefield. The years turned into decades, and the reformed Galactic Council became a testament to the enduring power of fragile alliances. The humans, true to their words, spoken in the wake of war, faded from the galactic stage. Their ships rarely ventured beyond their solar system. Their focus turned towards healing their own internal divides. Earth became a place of pilgrimage for those seeking to understand the delicate balance between strength and self-restraint. The Karkorum, under watchful eyes, slowly rebuilt, their new generations raised on stories of devastation rather than conquest. They chose a different path. They became renowned for their skills in bioengineering, their knowledge of destruction repurposed to heal ravaged worlds and mend the scars of war. The Orions grudgingly accepted the new order. They retained their warrior spirit but channeled it into the protection of the Council's borders, their strength serving as the shield rather than a spear. Lysatra, now an elder stateswoman, devoted her life to ensuring the Galactic Council never strayed far from the lessons learned in the War of Annihilation. The specter of Marcos and his ruthless strategies was never forgotten. Hollow recordings of his declarations remained locked in the deepest archives of the Council, a perpetual cautionary tale. There would always be those who whispered of the necessity of his tactics, who saw unchecked power as the surest path to security. But there were more who spoke of the survivors from Earth, of the quiet resolve of the reformed Karkorum and of Lysatra, whose multifaceted eyes had seen both the abyss of war and the tenuous hope of something better. And so the council endured, a patchwork of fractured alliances constantly tested and mended, for in a vast galaxy filled with the echoes of conflict, true peace was an unachievable ideal. The best they could hope for was the courage to navigate between war and ruin, to forever strive for the day when the words when humans joined the war, it was over in hours, became the dark chapter 
of history and nothing more.